vital in our heart. Join us on the journey through darkness, we'll bring light. Our old report is here, guiding us through the night. Hello again and welcome back everybody to another edition of the Rural Report. I'm your Rural 2IC and uh, if you read the title or saw the thumbnail and the winner is, well, we're not doing a giveaway or having a promotion so you might be scratching your head, right? So if this is your first time, welcome. Thank you for stopping by and I apologize. Uh, trust me, this will... Uh, come clearer as we go on. Uh, for the rest of you, welcome, buckle up. This might be a, a pretty fun and interesting video for you. And as I get into this, uh, I will take a step back and say, some of you are going to find this a bit silly. Some of you, this is going to be frustrating. For the rest of you, I challenge you, open your mind and, you know, hear me out just for a little bit. So when it comes to SHTF to survival. Okay. Everybody seems to have a focus on uh, luxury, on comfort, on uh, being on top, number one, being better. Really, when it all comes down, when the, when the dust settles and everything else, what is the absolute number one top tier criteria for SHTF? survival right for for making it out alive at the end of everything so if we say an shtf event happens insert whatever scenario you want here and let's say it lasts for a year at the end of that year things are calm things are being rebuilt society is coming back together it's it's you know getting back to normal so Everybody who's alive made it through SHTF. That is the one absolute criteria of the box that needs checked in order for you to categorize it as a success. Now, you can go through and you can put in other things. Well, you know, how many people thrived? How many uh, people expanded, gained new territory, became wealthier, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, those, those are other boxes or anything along that line. My point on this is unless that first box of you survived is checked, it doesn't matter how comfortable you was in the first six months or how much land and territory you gained in the first six months. It doesn't matter how much wealth you accumulated, how popular you was. None of that matters unless you survived. And so let me give you a scenario. Let's say that there's a group of people and they're down there in, uh, let's say, uh, Southern California, and they want to get all the way up to uh, Northern Maine. And they have to take different means of transportation. So uh, the first person packs up and sets out on foot. The second one grabs a bicycle and they go off. The third one jumps on a horse and goes horsebacking across the country. The next one grabs a vehicle and start it up and, and off they go. The next one jumps on a boat. Their way they go. The next one hops aboard a train. There they go. The next one jumps on an airplane. Okay. Covers pretty much most of transportation, right? So there you go. All of them are off. Now, in first scenario, all of them make it. Who won? Well, if you go by my method, they all won. Now, you're going to have people that go in through and debate. Well, the airplane won. They obviously got there faster. Or uh, the, the one that went on horseback won because they got to uh, experience the land more. Or the person in the boat, uh, you know, probably was a, a safer trip or, or something along those lines. People are going to argue and everything. And we can, we can really go into it. Well, I didn't tell you the whole story. So the person that goes, well, the airplane guy won because he got there faster. 
Okay, well, what happens if he flew halfway and then uh, he stopped off? So he made a, a pit stop and uh, he hung out for a little while. Did he make it there first? Uh, you know, you can say uh, the person in the, the car had it better because, uh, you know, they, they could take whatever route that they wanted. You know, they could go north and south and this and that. Uh, you can argue for any one of them and it's going to be who you identify with, or it's going to be on speed because, uh, you know, people have the tendency that they want to justify their answer. And it doesn't necessarily have to be. If the whole goal is survival is to survive, then if I tell you, it doesn't matter if it was the guy on foot or the guy in the airplane, every single person that started from Southern California to Maine made it alive, then they all achieved the goal. And you're going to get somebody that says, uh, well, the person in the airplane uh, had a better time. Okay, well, what happens if they didn't fly, fly first class? What happens if it was a old, broken down airplane that could only stay uh, in the air for 25 minutes or something like that before the thing just... Uh, you know, started breaking down and then and, and things like that. Maybe the person uh, traveling by boat had a huge yacht and it was all packed full of goodies and, and all the other stuff. Maybe they were the winner. Maybe everybody that took something with an engine had really bad engine failure and uh, they had to set out and they had to finish it on, on foot. Uh, you know, we, we didn't get all the intel. We, we, we just heard part of the story and made up our minds. And that goes, you know, in a little deeper of, uh, you know, you need all of the variables. You need all of the information if you're really going to justify your answer, because anything that's said, the story can change, right? So when we start putting this and applying it to survival, you can get to point A to point B quicker. You can go out of your way a little bit. You can go point A to point C to point D and then get to point B. You can go through and do it in a more luxurious style. You can have all these preps set up and all this other stuff. Uh, you could struggle really, really bad and, and barely make it. The point is you made it. Uh, I think that we need to, to, step back every once in a while and be humble and simplify things. Uh, you know, they, they make up the acronym of KISS for a reason. Keep it simple, right? Uh, I think a lot of times there's people that go out and they try to make things difficult when it doesn't need to be. For me, when people come and, and start asking me for advice or when I uh, watch people try and have these conversations... They go in and they start out with uh, the first rule of survival is you have to have fire. You have to have the ability to cook and boil water and, and all this. There's their answer. And then they start putting out all their justifications. Somebody else is going to say, no, you have to have protection because it doesn't matter what it is that you have. If you can't protect it, somebody's going to take it from you. And then, okay, there's your answer. There's all your justifications. Mine is different. And the way that I have always uh, given out my advice is figure out the one thing right when you know this is a survival situation. This is this is life and death. This is no joking matter. My next decision is going to be based on whether I make it or not. What is the first thing that's going to take you out? Solve that problem. Once you have solved that problem and it is no longer a problem, Repeat. Now, what is the next thing it's going to take me out? Solve that problem until it is no longer a problem and move down the list. You may never get to the bottom of the list, okay? And it may be solving the same problem. That same problem may pop back up, okay? It may be something like uh, the weather. Okay, it's really, really cold out. What am I going to do? Well, I'm going to start a fire. Okay, okay. Uh, now that I'm warm and everything, what's my next one? Well, I'm really, really thirsty. Okay, I need to go get water or do something so I can hydrate. What's next thing? I'm starting to get hungry. Okay, I'm going to go.
go out and hunt and trap and whatever. Now that I've eaten, what's the next thing? Well, my fire's dying down. I'm back to number one. I'm starting to get cold. Okay, there's, there's your example on that. Figure out your problem, solve it. Not only will that keep you busy, keep you active, but it's going to keep you alive. Too many people focus on one thing, and then what that does is it ends up getting them in trouble down the road. If you focus on security, okay, I'm going to get all these blades and firearms and uh, different uh, pepper sprays and and all these different self-defense tools and all this other stuff. Okay, you're, you're armed to the teeth. But what happens if you are alone and there's nobody around for miles and you're thirsty? Okay, (laughs) yo, uh, what happens if you trip and fall and you get a laceration on your leg? Okay, that blade and firearm may not stop the bleed. Uh, Anybody else, uh, switch it over to medical. You may take all this medical training and have all this medical supplies and all this other stuff. But if somebody comes running up to you with a a baseball bat, what's it going to do to stop them? How are you going to defend yourselves? And I think that's one of the things is people get so focused on a a certain uh, topic or a certain piece of gear or they find their passion and then that becomes so focused that they lose the big picture in survival everybody is right and wrong it's all a puzzle and it's all pieces that's going to fit survival yes medical is important yes food is important water warmth security all of it is important but it's not a focal point. It's not the main piece of the puzzle. You, you've got to make sure you've got all the pieces of the puzzle. Otherwise, it's not going to come together. They all work hand in hand. They're all little tiny pieces to keep you alive. Make sure you don't fall into that trap where you focus and, and you start letting emotion. I'm really excited about this. That's wonderful. Get excited. Okay. It's wonderful to have that passion and to have that flame up under you, but don't let it run, you know, rampant over the other important things. We, we got to have food. We've got to have water. We've got to have all of it. Make sure that you don't have this, this false sense of security that I'm going to run this race in a sprint. Prepping is not a sprint. Okay. Prepping is a journey. It's a lifestyle. Make sure that you have that mentality. You've got to make sure that you step back and see the big picture of everything. Because if you don't, I'm I'm trying my hardest to show the people that need to hear this message. You have to make sure that you understand all of it's important. And while something may seem more important to you, step back. I challenge you. Is it seriously that important? Or do you have some other, I don't know, uh, motive behind it? Do you have something that you're just trying to justify being that passionate about it? And there's so many different mistakes that can happen that... I think that it's it's going to come that if SHTF ever happens, if it ever comes to light, that it's going to be one of those, that passion is going to get you so far, but I don't think it's going to get you across the finish line. And there's so much when it comes to prepping, there's something new to learn every single day, whether that's food whether that's water, whether that's fire, whether that's self-protection, medical, uh, you know, it goes on and on and on. You can seriously every day learn something new, learn a different technique, learn a different 
a piece of gear that'll help you learn a different method, learn, uh, you know, a, a new way to tie a knot or uh, a different way to go fishing or build a trap or, or whatever. Challenge yourself every day. Keep an open mind. Yes, utilize what works. If it works for you, that's wonderful. It doesn't mean that it's absolutely the best way, though. Don't be afraid to try new things. Don't be afraid to challenge yourself. Don't be afraid of failure, okay? If you have something that works, you can alter a little chunk of it and try it. Maybe it is better, okay? But if you are stuck in your way, you'll never know. And if it does fail, now you're even smarter. You know that this doesn't work and you can exit off the list. It makes you a better prepper to try new things. You already have something that works and you tried it and it failed. Go back to what works. It's good. It, it, it's your fail safe. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Don't go, well, I've been growing tomatoes like this for years and they've done absolutely incredible. But I'm going to try something new with my entire tomato crop. Don't do that. Take a couple of plants and, and try a new method. See if it's better. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. Maybe it's exactly the same outcome, okay? Maybe one's a little easier. Maybe it's harder. But it gives you experience and knowledge. And you can use that wisdom not only for yourself, but for others. You can share that. So when it comes to this, if you want to figure out how you're going to win SHTF, survive. That's how you win. Make sure all your boxes are checked and continue to reevaluate each one. Continue to elevate your skill and gear and everything in each category that there is in survival. If you do that, your odds of survival go up. And that, again, checks the first box on whether you win or you lose. Make sure you put yourself in the best, the best possible way that you possibly can. Okay. I know I just jumbled that all up. Make sure that you give yourself the best statistical possibility of the greatest outcome of survival that you can. We'll leave it at that. So, uh, but that's what I've got for you. I hope you guys got a little bit of information, a little bit of substance, value, things like that. Uh, if you did, let me know down in the comments. Give me a thumbs up. If you like this sort of thing and you're new here, hit the little subscribe button and make sure the bell is turned on so you don't miss when new videos come out, right? Uh, but other than that, uh, I want to thank you guys for spending a little bit of time with me. I hope you guys have a great day, amazing day, and a blessed day. Stay tuned because there is more information to come. And with that, I'm going to remind you, remain united because we're all prepping in this together.